are now watching the College Baseball Insider Show. It's behind it. This is Hammer. Left field and we are tied. Wow. Now, here are your hosts, giving you an inside look into the top matchups. What is up? Insider fans, we are coming to you with the week eight preview. Go like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I think we just hit 100 subscribers finally, mm -hmm. but we have over 1,500 followers on Twitter. So a lot of you guys are slacking, but joined as always, Q Millie and Todd, Smitty Bucks, Toddy. Uh, <laughs> what's up, fellas? I need a redemption weekend. I've been raped the last two weeks. It's not been pretty keeping it from being a family show here. <laughs> Better than what I wanted to say. Oh, Smitty. Hey, I just, hey, it's great to be here, by the way. Uh, I did want to say, so when we did the show Tuesday, at the very end, we were joking about me buying an Indiana t-shirt and jinxing the team. And somebody did make a quick uh, message about, Smitty, I you should get a Arkansas t-shirt to jinx them. And I, so sorry we didn't answer. We were going off. I would have answered you. But I can't do Arkansas and I can't do Florida. I cannot put these two guys in a bad mood and jinx their season. So anybody else, a t-shirt, let me know. And uh, maybe another team and I can maybe jinx them. This, want, this Smitty jinx with the t-shirts. You want to know a quick way to go from a three-man show to a two-man show that's it yeah exactly yeah i'm on <laughs> probation people i gotta i don't I know what he did spot, he just stopped so. showing up i don't know we lost contact somehow <laughs> don't reach out don't to know. him he he rooted for michigan all football season football. And the national championship so I, I, i'm not worried about it i'll send you a razorback shirt <laughs> but no curse no uh no curse there because we may already be the curse of the number one overall seed we shall see, which leads me into the first preview, Ole Miss, Arkansas. Starting here, first pitch coming at about 6 p.m. Central. Um, Sean Alvarez says, send me one, two. Arkansas, whatever <laughs> the spread is all weekend. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to be really worried about this series, but just looking at the raw data, Liam Doyle going, uh, not Saturday, but Friday, kind of worries me a little bit. I feel like if you look at his Sierra, it is really good. So he's just not performing to the level of his pitches. But I do feel like Arkansas is in a prime spot to uh, to not have the letdown spot, I guess, of, of what you would say. Coming off a big series win over LSU, I could have felt like we were sleeping a little bit in the Arkansas State game, but we weren't. Uh, they took care of business in a shutout win. So I feel like much of the the same is going to be just Arkansas. Arkansas is going to dominate. And I don't say that as a fan. I just feel like when you look at the the numbers, you know, most cases Arkansas is lacking in the the hitting categories. But even against Ole Miss, we're, you know, we're pretty decent. We're tied at way to runs created plus. Got a little bit better at batting average, but Arkansas's batting average against SEC opponents is even better than their season-long averages. So, yeah, I feel good. Do any of y'all want to uh, counter my argument and and lessen the Arkansas fandom going on here? I would be concerned if this was in Oxford, but it's not. Uh, I, I don't know if Arkansas sweeps. It's really hard to sweep back-to-back -back series, but nonetheless, I think Arkansas handles it 2-1. to one. Smitty. Yeah, looking at the numbers, you know, Arkansas 9 1 last 10. I think they have a 17 game win streak at home. Old Miss 4 and 6 their last 10. On the road, I think they're 4 and 4. So looking at things coming off three straight losses, I think just the pitching. I just don't. I Someone just said Old Miss pitching. I know that one guy has okay stats. I just don't think it's going to be enough. I think. Arkansas will be able to score runs this weekend, and their staff is just too dominant. I like Arkansas to do another sweep this weekend. Moving along to the team that got swept by LSU or by Arkansas, and then lose a midweek game to Southern, just completely inexcusable. LSU Tigers host Vanderbilt Commodores at the box. Jay Johnson sticking with that Luke Coleman back in the 
Thursday night slot, Friday slot, whatever you want to call it. He's going to come out and shove. I feel like he's going to have a bounce back game, cut down on the walks that he had against Arkansas. I like LSU tonight. I know Q and I are both on it. We'll get to our best bets here in a little bit, but I, I just feel like this is the time where LSU gets right in this series, and I feel like they get a series win 2-1. Well, yeah, I agree. I, I think this, especially being at home, you were just embarrassed on the road to the number one team in the country. That's not LSU baseball. And then to lose against Southern, Jay Johnson's probably got this team fired up. I'm sure there was a come to Jesus. Maybe not Tuesday night, but Wednesday of practice, I'm sure they sat and they, they had a long conversation, maybe a shortened practice because of that. Listen, LSU is still a tough place to play. The Alex box is going to be packed. It's a top 20 matchup. They don't like Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt doesn't like LSU. You know, two cream of the crop programs in the SEC. It's going to be loud. I think Luke Coleman has uh, an inability to have two bad starts in a row. I think he cleans it up. I think they get a desperation win. Again, they haven't won an SEC series. I think they get it done, not only because I think they're going to play up to their potential for this weekend, but I think Vandy's going to slide down a bit. Vandy's offense was extremely um, playing above their ceiling the last few weeks, and and I think you're going to see that kind of come back to earth. I think they have great pitching. I think they have mediocre hitting, and I think that that shows today, uh, tomorrow, and Saturday here at the box. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the. I think I saw today. This is the longest losing streak for LSU under Johnson. So, I think this is a desperate team. I mean, they like Q said, this is a tough place to play. Fourteen and five at home. Really bad loss midweek there to Southern. I'm higher on Vandy than I think both of these guys are. I like teams that have pitching. Their defense is pretty good. Now, I think Q was kind of correct. I think their offense has been maybe overperforming a little bit. But I think this is desperate times for LSU. I think they're going to come out and they're going to get the series. I like LSU 2-1 to one in this. I think Vandy gets at least one of these games. And to close out the Thursday start, the Thursday games that begin – You've got North Carolina versus Virginia in what I think is going to be a very good series. It's going to tell us a lot about both of these teams. I love this Tar Heels team. I think that they have – I always go back to if they had Jake Knapp, this team would be unreal, I feel like. But Fulger Boaz has been great as a Friday night guy. That is confirmed. He's going against Colin McKay. And I – I get that it's at Virginia. It's hard to win on the road. Uh, but I like North Carolina. I like North Carolina to win this series, and I think it starts tonight on the mound with with Boaz going against McKay. Q? It's a stay away. I, I would I would almost lean Virginia because Fulger kind of got in a little bit of trouble last week against Wake Forest, and, and Wake Forest is half of the offense as Virginia is. Colin McKay's looked really good in the Friday night spot. So I almost think Fulger and Colin kind of wash each other out offensively. Carolina has performed. I think Virginia is right there, maybe a little better. Yeah, they don't have that. Maybe they're six home runs shy, you know, but I think overall Virginia is a better hitting team and more consistent. So I give the slight lean to Virginia. I really like tomorrow. I'll be at work, so I won't be able to really – it out or do a video, but I, I think Evan Blanco gets the win tomorrow against Jason DeCaro, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if North Carolina wins tonight, but I also wouldn't be surprised if UVA wins both Thursday and Friday and then maybe drops the series Saturday. I just think UVA's kind of peaking and I'm waiting for North Carolina and maybe I'm, I'm you know, waiting for something to never happen, but I, I just think North Carolina is a slightly worst team out of the two and a slight regression from them. And I think it happens in Charlottesville. Smitty. I think you got to root for North Carolina just to say Fulger Boaz or whatever that name. That's fantastic. I, I mean, you got to take them anyway, just because of that guy's name. No, you know, I kind of like this North Carolina team too. I think they're doing, they're doing some good things. Nine and one, their last 10, I think they're on a four game winning streak on the road, but then you UVA is a very tough place to play 14 and two at home. I looked at the ERA, a little higher team ERA for Virginia. I think this one's going to be tight. I think it's going to be a great series. I think this one, I like Carolina just a plain, I think a little bit better. I think they get it two one in this, but tonight yeah, you got to go with Fulger, man. 
I took him plus 125. I, I feel like this should be an even split at minus 115 both ways. I I do like North Carolina, but I think one of the biggest things is when when your uh, Golden Spikes Awards watch guy in Vance Honeycutt doesn't make the card for impact hitters, that just tells you how deep this North Carolina Tar Heels team is. And I feel like if it gets to a bullpen game, which kind of like Q alluded to, I feel like the pitchers are going to cancel each other out. We'll see in the bullpen. So I'm, I'm going to lean into that North Carolina bullpen, hope that they get us home. Uh, but right now you can get on DraftKings. Virginia is 30 to 1. North Carolina is 40 to 1. I would say that whoever you like to win this series, it might be worth betting a little bit on them to win it all because I do feel like they're going to be in the driver's seat. Whoever comes out of this, they're going to be in the driver's seat of the ACC, which, I mean, if they can get to Omaha and you've got a 30 to 1 or 40 to 1 ticket in your pocket, I feel like you're going to be in a really good spot moving forward. I would even take it one step further, Matt, and say if you like either team, at 40 to 1 and 31, you might want to throw just a couple bucks on each team. They're they're essentially, if you go back, they're identical. I mean, they're 4.02 Sierra to 4.08. Their offensive numbers are one or two off of each other. They're they're probably the most other than batting average. You know, the WRC plus is right there. ERA is a little inflated, but you know, XFIP is five one hundredths, you know, of a point separation. These are two identical teams. So I wouldn't even sit there and say if North Carolina lost, they're fraudulent, or if UVA lost, they're fraudulent. I think both of these teams could sneak their way into Omaha and, and really nobody be surprised. So I would say if you like either one of them, bet, this, bet the same because I think these are your two teams that are probably going to win the ACC. I think we've seen Duke falter enough to where in a big moment, I don't, I don't think they get it done. I think it's North Carolina or Virginia winning the ACC. Speaking of Duke, they take on Miami, and I feel like – Duke's probably going to lose one because Miami is one of those sneaky teams. I mean, they're sitting at six and six in conference play despite their 15 and 13 record. Uh, Duke with Santucci going, I'm assuming against Gage Zeal, who I think was ACC pitcher of the year or pitcher of the week last week, had a really good outing. I lean Duke, but I have a feeling that this number is going to be almost unplayable on Duke to where the value is going to be on Miami. I do think Duke wins the series 2-1, but that uh, anytime you get a Miami team that has a lot of talent, it just worries me a little bit with the flakiness of the uh, the Duke pitching staff. But, I mean, the numbers say Duke far and away, but I wouldn't be laying minus 200 or higher on them. What do you think, Q? I think Duke's going to take the series, and, and personally, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to say 2-1, to one, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's 3-0 simply because Miami struggles on the road. Uh, they just, for some reason, they, they can beat teams like Duke and North Carolina at home, and they can't do it, you know, on a neutral field or uh, or on the road. So this game, it's I guess technically it's a neutral field. It's Durham where Duke had played all these years at their home games, but now they're back at uh, their own university on campus. So I, this is like a home neutral type weird thing whatever you want to call it but it's essentially a duke home game and, and i think miami's going to struggle i haven't checked the weather i don't know what kind of weather durham's going to have but miami also struggles if it's not 80 degrees and sunny so i, I think that's duke's advantage as well uh santucci should be fine i think kyle johnson's looked really well on sundays um i don't expect duke to blow him out by any means especially on friday night because i think gage deals legit but i think duke gets a 2-1 if not 3-0 here Smitty. Yeah, you know, Q said, I think Miami's two and four on the road. They're coming on a losing streak. Uh, but like you said, Matt, it seemed like they always squeak at least one game out of a series somehow, if it's hitting a home run in the bottom of the ninth or something like that. So I I kind of go with Q in this. I, I would say I like 3-0 Duke. I just think Duke's going to have enough pitching um, to get through this. I think their offense is better. I'm just not completely sold yet on Miami. So I would I like Duke. I think they're, you know, it's not – where they've been playing, but where they pay, played in the past. I think the environment will good. They're good at home. I think this is a 3-0 sweep. No odds out yet, but our implied probability, assuming that it is Gage Zeal versus Jonathan Santucci, we've got Duke at 60%, which is playable at about minus 150. I feel like you're probably going to have to lay more than that, though, in this one. So that's just something to monitor. 
Moving on, the Kentucky Wildcats host the Alabama Crimson Tide. And I've been really impressed with Alabama this, this far in the season. They are four and five in conference play. They probably should have won one at least against Georgia instead of getting swept. But hats off to Kentucky sitting at eight and one in the eight in the SEC. That's impressive. I don't care who you play, but the 63 strength of schedule does kind of stick out to me and the projections like Alabama in this one. We do have confirmed pitching, Ben Hess, Greg Ferrone, Zane Adams for Bama. Haven't heard a peep out of Kentucky yet. I hope that we can get Alabama at a short number, but I honestly, I think I would lay up to like minus 150, 140 on the Crimson Tide to get this win in game one. What do you think, Q? I'm right there with you. I think Alabama, I know when there's been, you know, the trend of, of home teams winning, but I think that, you know, Kentucky going into Oxford and some other matchups that, that didn't live to be true. I think Texas was another one. So when I look at this Alabama Kentucky team, I think Kentucky's overrated. I, I think they're better than last year, but I still think, you know, they're not the top of the SEC. And I think Alabama has the ability. They've, they've had some comeback wins. I think Ben Hess is good enough on Friday, you know, to be able to, uh, to take advantage of, of maybe Kentucky's inability to hit home runs. Listen, they have 29 home runs. I think they got 13 of them last weekend against Old Miss, who was throwing bat in practice. So really that number should be about 15 compared to their 52. I think this is a situation where Alabama just kind of muscles their way through offensively. I think the pitching is a wash, if not a little bit better to the Crimson Tide. But the offense, to me, it's just it, it's glaring to, to Alabama. Smitty. I think Q likes Gorilla Ball and not small ball, where I'm more small ball and defense. We were joking the other day about this because I like Vanderbilt. Not, you know, don't hit a lot of home runs, steal some bases. Now you look at this Kentucky team, same thing. You know, I agree with them. They hit a lot of home runs. They only have 29, but they have three guys that have double digits and steals. I like that. I like the team pitching staff. I like this team. I like this Kentucky team. I think they're going to hang around. They're nine and one last 10, uh, 13 and two at home. I think the streak's going to continue. I think they get this series. Let's go Kentucky. Maybe I'll buy a shirt and jinx in next. <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, team, uh, please explain to me this. Georgia's 23-6. and six. They're taking on number 23, Mississippi State, who's 19-11. and 11. Same conference record. RPI for Georgia's fifth. Strength schedule's 10th compared to 58 and 61. Probability has Georgia winning. Why isn't Georgia ranked, though? Because I, it, I, it I think a lot of weekend. You've been saying that for weeks. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, Bulldogs, D1. Didn't they get, didn't they? I, why am I drawing a blank on who they played last week? Tennessee. Tennessee dominated. 2-1. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's why. You had your opportunity Swept to go on the road. Bama. Yeah, but you had your opportunity to go on the road against a good Tennessee team, and you shit the bed again. I mean, now I see it. And, you know, Kendall obviously tweeted that out. Somebody asked for justification. He, he simply gave it. He said win. You know, yeah, they, they had a good series uh, when they, they swept uh, Kentucky – or not Kentucky. Um, Bama. Uh, Bama. But then they also got swept by Kentucky – yeah, you know, you've didn't go on the road and, and do anything against a good Tennessee team without Billy Amick. So that's to me, that's concerning. Now, could you probably, I mean, yeah, I guess you could still make the argument at 24, 25, sure, but um, they're probably 26, 27 range, I would imagine. And, and really, they've got to go on the road and I think win a series. I'm excited for the SEC pick them. Smitty, what do you think? Well, this is a team, if you like offense, they have it. You know, I kind of like this Georgia team too. Mississippi State, I can't really figure them out yet this year. I know they're ranked and everything like this. I think it's going to be a tight one. I really do. Uh, I think I kind of like Georgia, though, in the series. I think this is the weekend maybe they, they, they take a series and maybe they'll get considered. All right, next up, we've got Wake Forest just tumbling down the top 25, taking on Virginia Tech, who's trending upwards. 59% win probability, though, with Chase Burns, assuming he goes on Friday night. 
I, this is probably going to be a stay away because you're probably going to have to lay minus 200 or higher for for uh, Chase Burns if he goes. And I don't, quite frankly, know enough about this Virginia Tech team. I know that they, you know, the strength schedule right there, 155th, that's not great. Uh, I feel like they haven't been tested, and I feel like Wake Forest does have a good spot here to bounce back and win a series in the ACC. We shall see, but I'm not going to be surprised if Virginia Tech wins it and really catapults them into that top 10 to be being a legit contender in the ACC. Smitty, I'll go to you. What do you think in this one? Yeah, you know, if you watch the show on Tuesday, Q really talked about this matchup and said this Virginia team can really hit the ball. And, you know, you really look into this team, they can. I think they have seven guys hit over 300. This is an offensive team. I have down in my notes, you know, are the bats going to wake up for Wake Forest? Q keeps saying on social media, just not going to, it's not there. And I kind of agree with them. Hartle, too. When's he going to step up? So, you know, this was a team I said on Tuesday that this was my team that was down. For me, and of course they should be down because I think so many people had so much potential of this team and they just have not done it. Now, Burns has been fantastic, but the offense hasn't been there. Some of their bigger bats. And I think this is the week that Virginia Tech is going to show that they're they're a legit team. I think Virginia Tech takes this at least 2-1. Q. Give me the Hokies. Uh, I think they definitely win Friday. Listen, when I compare this Virginia Tech team, I'll compare them obviously to my Gators of last year. And I don't, I don't think people probably remember, but Chase Burns got rocked by Florida's big hitters. And that's what Virginia Tech is. I mean, they swing a sledgehammer. That ball goes 500 feet for a lot of them. And he's, to me, I know he, he left Tennessee. He went to what they call like the pitching academy or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, he gave up some runs against North Carolina who could hit the ball. Now you're going against an offense that is even better than North Carolina. You know, I know Virginia Tech's the higher-ranked team, but I think in the college baseball world, Wake Forest is still getting the benefit of the doubt. You know, as a team that can turn it around, there's still high odds to win the College World Series to make it. There's no love down in Blacksburg right now. You know, outside of D1, ranking them number 11 and Wake Forest 21. This is a series to where take out the rankings – Wake Forest is probably going to be the 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 common bet, you know, or the public bet. And Virginia Tech knows that. This is a, a big series to to maybe dethrone Wake Forest once and for all, the, the ACC benefit of the doubt. And I think the Hokies get it done. I think Brett Renfro, he's a true freshman. He was pitching in the high school semis last year, uh, you know, where Smitty and I live. And now he's throwing Friday night like he's a junior. He's He's got good stuff. He's got a good whip. ERA is pretty low. Sierra's under three. This team pitching was their question, and they've they've to me they've stepped up to the challenge. They pitch really well, and their offense hasn't skipped a beat. I mean, they just mashed the ball, and I think they're going to mash Wake Forest. And you know, even if this gets into a duel, or even if if Virginia Tech's pitching kind of gets lit up by maybe a Wake Forest offense that wakes up temporarily, Virginia Tech can outslug them. And and that's the thing. I don't think Wake Forest can go win an eleven to ten game. Virginia Tech can. So I think the the way to win benefits both Tech and, and, and whether it's a slugfest or a pitching goal. And implied probability of forty one percent is about one forty five. If you can get Virginia Tech plus one forty five, we feel like it's a good play, and that I feel like is a good time to talk about the win probability. It's not necessarily who we predict to win it's trying to determine value to get an ev bet um so if like I say if if you've got 41 percent win probability that equates to a, a implied probability of of about a 145 line so if it's better than that it's it's worth a bet in our opinion so that being said a little housekeeping moving right along tennessee they take on an Auburn Tigers team that is just desperate for an SEC series win here. Sitting at one and eight in conference play, they flirted with top 25 there for a week or two. But Tennessee going to be without Billy Amick again. Is this the series that Auburn can finally win? Or do you think it's going to be a one and two or a 0 and three type sweep, Q? Man, this one, I'll be honest, it's a coin flip. I, I, I think Tennessee needs to go on the road and prove that they can win without Billy Amick on the road in a different atmosphere. You know, they they played a Georgia team that throws us three Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on the mound. So, 
it's a little easier to beat them. Auburn, I think, has better pitching than than Georgia does. So I think I, I don't think you're gonna see a 16 to 11 game. Ah, man, Auburn's gonna get one of them. I wouldn't be surprised if they get two. The problem is I just I don't know where the wins are. It's probably a stay away from me all series long, to be honest. Starting Dylan Watts, he I don't think he's been in that Friday night role yet. The two two or 277 ERA, 235 Sierra looks good. We'll see how it translates. They've got the arm or the the bats to really contend with anybody. If they I wake up I've seen that if they if they can just string together some hits, but it is pretty glaring the fact that the the row for Tennessee is just all green. They uh, they obviously have the advantage here. Smitty, what are you thinking? Yeah, I like – this is one of my other teams I really like. I like Tennessee. You know, that's a big loss with Billy out of the lineup there. But it, like you said, this Auburn team is just not – have not been playing well. Three and seven last ten. It's just – I do think they get one. But I just think this is a better team. I think Tennessee has a lot of – they have some good arms. They can hit the ball. I just think this is a good spot. I think they'll get they'll get at least two in this. I like Tennessee this weekend. All right. Staying in the SEC, you've got number three, Texas A&M, going on the road to Columbia to take on South Carolina, who did pop into the top 25. Senate 21 and 8. Aggies, I'm not completely sold on them. They that 95th ranked strength strength to schedule is something that I'm keeping an eye on because I do think that their stats are still pretty overinflated from a week schedule early on. Braden Montgomery is just smashing the ball though. Jace Lavillette, soft no sophomore slump for him. It's this is a tough lineup, but I feel like South Carolina is going to win this series and and knock AM down a little bit. What do you think, Smitty? Yeah, that you know, I, I, this Texas A and M team, like you said, are they this good. I, I know they did a nice job for me midweek when I did a little money line parlay. They were in there and they took care of business, which is always nice because these teams seem like they always lose during the midweek. So I like the South Carolina team too. I, I think this can be a tight series. Uh, you know, they they're seven and three last 10. You know, I like looking at stuff like that. How are they playing? They're playing well, but I kind of like AM. I just think they have a little bit more talent than South Carolina. So mm. I like AM to take this series. All right. And the bonus play, you've got Florida because everybody wants to talk about the Missouri Tigers. Number six ranked Florida with that 17 and 11 record, but six and three in conference play, taking on another one and eight. SEC team 12 and 18 overall for Mizzou. These guys just, they're not very good. Let's call it what it is. It's a pretty bad program. Brandon Neely in that Friday slot taking on Logan Lunsford. I do like Javen Pimentel uh, at 291 Sierra. I do feel like if Mizzou has a chance to get a game, it's going to be game two against Liam Peterson. Q. I'll let you break down your Gators. What do you think happens down in Columbia, Missouri? I think on Friday night, Brandon Neely stretches five innings. I think, you know, he kind of ran out of gas last week. I think you'll see a little better performance. Obviously, it's going to be against a lackluster offense. So the the leeway is going to be a lot farther than maybe against a Mississippi State team. I think Liam Peterson, I mean, he's pitched really well for th- – three to four innings, and then that last two-thirds of an inning, wherever he's fallen, has just fell apart. I think this is a team where he gets his second win. He's sitting at one and three. He has looked better. You know, his pitch command is looking better. Again, he's he's learning to pitch in the SEC. I think this is a good spot where he builds some confidence. You know, each start, I think, has looked pretty well for him. I think he maybe doesn't make some of those mistakes against a bad Missouri offense, so then – you know, it's all mental with these these true freshmen. If if he goes out and throws five and and doesn't give up those two and three solo shots that he's been prone to against LSU and Mississippi State, that does a lot for a kid. And I think he gets right. And I think Jack, you know, Jack could even have a bad performance, but I, I just think at some point he's going to regress, even if it's against Missouri. I think the offense is starting to click a little bit better. Uh, you know, Cade Curlin's starting to get that fracture under control. He's starting to hit the ball really well. 
Colby Shelton kind of got out of his slump with a home run. Brody Donay hit two bombs the other night, which was good to see coming off the bench. You know, Tanner Garrison, their catcher, who batted 150, he started smoking the ball against Mississippi State. Like, it seems like all the pieces are starting to click for this team slowly but surely. And and it's good to see, you know, they Luke Heyman, a couple hits the other night, getting him out of his slump. I think uh, for Missouri, it's a bad time. Florida's starting to get together, and it's going to be a 3-0 sweep. Just sitting here waiting on odds. What do you think Florida opens up as in game one? Oh, man, I think it's going to be like a like 215. Miz- yeah, Mizzou. Mizzou's Here's the thing I want. 300 against over every under. State. Over under 450 foot home run by Jack Caglina in this this weekend. Last time he was in Missouri, he hit one 488 off of the where the, I guess they're in uh, their inside football field. The other night he hits a 491. I think it's I think you got to play the over. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean he is just he, I want him to win the Golden Spikes. That's really all I care about. It's the end of the year, win it all. Arkansas out to minus four ten now. This is uh this is getting a little ridiculous. But whoa, we'll start it off with Arkansas Old Miss for. The Can I just say something? He didn't even ask what I thought of that series because we got the Florida insider there. So oh, I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna say I really don't need to say much about that. I think Q covered everything really really well there. Oh, I'll, breaking I, news! We stopped caring about Smitty's picks. <laughs> <forward>. <laughs> I guess I just don't matter about no, my no, sports. It's hey, remember, I picked me. them to win the national championship. Yeah, and the guy, really. come on now. I was hey, trying to transition. He picked to me on the South I'm, Carolina. So I, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm I was trying good. to transition to talk about Arkansas again. Okay. I know. Sorry. It's always Arkansas. Arkansas. Let's talk Indiana Hoosier baseball. Let's go. It's not. Uh, Smitty, Ole Miss, Arkansas. What you got? <laughs> Uh, I got to look at my picks here, but I know this one off the top of my head. I think I did a pretty good job coming through the show here, remembering that. I have Arkansas 3 0. Q. Arkansas 2 1. I'm going to Arkansas 3 0. I'm just going to start copying Smitty's place. All right. Come on. Smitty. Keeping that Vanderbilt. Crowd. Vanderbilt fan himself. Oh, this was hard. I really wanted to go 2 1 Vanderbilt. I really did. But I'm going to do 2 1 LSU. Oh, Q. 2-1 LSU. I got to separate myself somehow. But I, I don't know. I need some, I need some viewers to help me out here. What do you think? I'll go two one LSU two. Can't really make a case for Vanderbilt winning two one, especially after the t- tonight's game. All right, Bama Kentucky. Two one Kentucky. Oh. Two one Al two one Alabama. Dang. 2-1 Alabama. Um, Georgia, Mississippi State. 2-1 Georgia. Q? 2-1 Mississippi State. Ooh. All right. I'm Somebody's going gonna break away from these this crowd. <laughs> this well, and it's it's at home. That worries me. This um, has Mississippi State LSU all over it. I'm going uh Georgia 2-1. That's join, join join the winning circle. Join the crown. Get the crown on your head. <laughs> all right. This should be an easy one. Liam, thanks for watching. Bet the over the whole Georgia MSU series. I agree. I feel like with Hunter Hines and Mississippi State mixed with Charlie Condon, I, I feel like Charlie Condon hits a home run every single day. Quietly, Dakota Jordan does as well. I'm glad we drafted yeah. him. Yeah, he's a good player. <laughs> he's good. Uh, Florida 3-0. I think we're probably unanimous in that. Flo- Florida 3-0. 
Florida 3-0. Tennessee, Auburn. Uh, Who won Tennessee? We need like a no contest. You get to pick one series. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, uh, Auburn 2-1. He's going for the crown. He's not messing around this week. Gamecocks 2-1. Oh, Ron Burgundy. Oh, Ron. Ron I'm, going, oh, I'm going Tennessee. Three zero. Oh, I like it. Um, on that road spread or road sweep. I can't write. Thank you. you know so what? I'm I'm going Tennessee two one. I got to change it. Tennessee oh. two one. I think I that's locked. I think he had it when he <laughs> writes it down on paper. It's done. A and M South Carolina two one Texas A and M. Oh, Gamecocks two to one. Another road team. Hmm. Oh, man. I'm going A&M 2-1-2. Two two. Ooh. As man, much I'll as I you. like the South Carolina team, I I just feel like a and is going to get one more big series win, and then, then they're going to start coming down to earth a little bit. All right, best bets recap. Full board here. It's a lot of blank space. LSU minus 150, North Carolina plus 125. Just for the sake of having some more plays, I parlayed Arkansas, LSU, got a little plus 111. And then I did an Arkansas, LSU, North Carolina parlay for plus 375. That was an eighth of a unit play for me. A little lunch money. Not a, uh, not a board that's going to send your kids to college, but – you know, you may be hey, able I to did, uh, tonight. I did I did play the Arkansas LSU Pony Line parlay with you. I didn't I didn't officially text it, but it is an official play that I tweeted out earlier. So but I don't have as good as odds as you. I got plus one oh three. Lee, I'm Chris Beard throwing up the first pitch at Arkansas minus three hundred. I I hope I've heard for those that don't know, Eric Musselman is the new head coach of the USC Trojans and a little foreshadowing. Um, USC played UC San, uh, San Diego last night. Somebody told me, isn't it odd that uh, Eric Musselman's alma mater is playing his future uh, landing spot for head coach. So it's a little weird. USC won it. They had some technical difficulties. It's very odd, very odd. But yeah, we're uh, we're all aboard the, the Chris Beard train. I heard that he was in Little Rock earlier today, lunch at, at Capitol. So I like we'll it. We'll see. Q, anything to close us out? Smitty, feel like I need to go to you first because I left you out of the pick. No. Florida, Mizzou. No, you know, no plays. I just really had didn't have a lot of time today to look at anything. I mean, one lean, I would say, I, I like, I'm with you on that North Carolina. I mean, I, I don't know if I'll play it. I might. If I do, I'll put it out. But um, I just think I like that North Carolina play. I think oh, the LSU it. one on my on the one LSU's really got some steam now. It's up a little higher too on what I saw. So I, I was a little late to the party there. So I probably would I would have taken LSU tonight too, but I just I wasn't on it quick enough. All right. Well, we'll retweet a a best bets recap for tomorrow. A little bigger slate with other than these three games tonight. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you. Monday for the recap show. Have a good weekend.